Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night, and welcome to another episode from me, Adam Mance, in my Seed Reviews and Tours series. Last week, we had this really beautiful seed. There's Mesa really close by, you can just see in the background. Beautiful building areas, an amazing nether spawn for 116. Really, really fantastic. And also, everything you need, pretty close by. Adicraft sent that one through, thank you for that, Adicraft. This week, it's episode 47. We have come into bedrock for today's seed, and the seed is here. Minus 206-369-3165. It's in the world name. Don't worry. I haven't forgotten to put it in the seed box as well. I'm getting the hang of this bedrock, Lark. Let's create the world. This is in 116 for bedrock. The first time I've come into 116 for bedrock. Let's crack on. And I have found myself right on the edge of a mesa biome with a little bit of green all around here as well. We've got some hills and forests. This is quite nice. We're looks like we've got ocean there i need to get myself up on a stone pillar i i do hate this i it's, it's not the way i like to play give me that stone give me that stone right so if i bring this i'm going to make a stone pillar so i can see what i'm doing let's go it's interesting to note that our spawning position is not zero zero it is one four five three and very nearly zero. So it's close, but not quite close. Now we've got all kinds of biomes sloping in ahead of us here. We've got the Mesa, look at that, the eroded badlands, my absolute favorite. Where it looks like we've got ice over in that direction. We've got plenty of ocean. We have got swamp, we've got forest, we've got plains. It's quite a lot going on here. Right, so I've frozen the sun because I'm God like that. So that's rising in the east, so as I know which way east is, which means this way. This way right here is north. Let's go and have a look and see what's there. Well, as we float in the northerly direction, we've got a big island to the left-hand side of us that has got a birch forest on it. So if you want birch so you can waste wood and make chests and stuff like that, maybe make them into sticks. That's absolutely perfect. But we've got frozen ocean on the right-hand side. No doubt the odd polar bear is going to be ambling around under there. And I wonder whether or not you might find a wreck. You often do find wrecks in those frozen oceans. Other side of the frozen ocean there, we've also got a little bit more ice. Bring your silk touch pick and you will be good for days. Over past that, we have got some, I guess you'd call it mountains. I wonder what um, height these mountains are at. Not particularly high, I'd suggest, but you might be able to do something quite interesting as a build here. You've got the waterfall coming down there. But if you think about having, I don't know, maybe a, a big dominant castle on the coast, that actually lends itself beautifully to be able to do that, especially if you're bringing in little islands with maybe bridges coming across to those little rock formations. That would look absolutely superb. The other side of this, we've got a plains biome. It looks like we've got a very small tiger biome on the other side of the plains with a village. Now, villages very often do hang around in bedrock. They seem to be quite common, shall we say, in bedrock. But this one is a triple churcher. It doesn't look like we've got a blacksmith, but we do have three churches. I mean, what place that big needs three churches, for goodness sake? We've got a small desert to the right-hand side of us there, so we've started to open our sand account there as well. Can't see any desert temples. Yes, I can, right in the middle. It's calling me a liar. Desert temple right there, so you could come and pillage that, and you would have plenty of loot, all kinds of things going on in desert temples. Definitely worth a poke there. I've stopped here, not because of the dark oak forest, which you could come and get all your dark oak wood from, but because of this interesting little sprout out. It looks a little bit like a golf course with a big water hazard right there. But look at the size of that pit drop. That's cool. I think right here, running from this side all the way around with those trees, but then rolling onto these planes, which doesn't need too much in the way of terraforming. A little bit there, that's quite a severe drop, but it's not too bad. You could definitely make a decent sized town out of that. That is a nice sight. Coming a little further north here, we're nearly 3,000 blocks to north. We've got a fairly severe mountain island there. You could do something amazing with that. Can you imagine some of that gothic piece growing up on top of that mountain island? That would be superb. But more importantly here, we've got a mushroom island. Look at that, right coming out of nowhere. I wasn't expecting it and bang, there it was. It's not too big, which is quite nice. And you've got a few little tiny islands that you could perhaps build off. Now my mate Mythical Sausage at the moment is doing his 116 survival series on a mushroom island. He's never done it before. I'm quite looking forward to it. But what he's doing, he's making the main island his project and these little side islands are where he's actually going to live so he doesn't spoil 
where his main project is, I think it's a great idea. And maybe you'd like to do it too. What makes it even more interesting is directly on the other side, you've got another little frozen ocean. So if you want to use ice in any way in your biome build here, then you could just grab it right here and it won't take you any time at all. We've come back to our spawn area and we're heading out in the easterly direction. I know because the frozen sun is right in front of me. Now on the left hand side, we have got this swamp. There's no witch huts that I can see at first glance, but it is a swamp. And if you like swamp living, that would be a nice place for you. We've got a dark oak forest on the left hand side. Tiny, teeny, tiny little frozen ocean right there and an ocean-esque area here. I think it's pretending to be an ocean because there's islands all the way around it. It's more like a massive bay, but very attractive. What I'm really interested in, and yes, I know in the comments I get it all the time, I'm obsessed with planes, but planes are my favorite biomes to build in because they give so much great opportunity to be able to do really nice city, town, and village builds. And this one is no exception. Needs a little bit of terraforming. I'm gonna be honest with you. There are some proper horrible slopes there, but maybe you like building on proper horrible slopes. And if you do, this is the fella for you. We've got, which makes it even better, a village right next to it, right here. I'm just going to zoom into the village and see whether or not there's anything interesting. It's a single church of this fella, but I cannot see a blacksmith. I always do like a village with a blacksmith, but not today. But I've heard that these villagers have signed up to the villager relocation program. And what that means is that you can bring them over to somewhere over there really easily to incorporate it into your build. You've also got another one there, less keen on that one because of the split levels. Continuing out east, we've got tiger biomes to the left and to the right as we come over the normal forest. Lots and lots of wood in this biome already. Very, very nice. And it opens up into this interesting shaped delta. Look at this. So we've got water that comes up and around and then back in again. So if you wish to, oh look, there's another village just there. Look, if you wish to, you could build something around this curve, maybe like a, a big harbour or something like that. And that would be really very interesting, especially if you incorporated some of these side buildings in it as well. If you like building seaside type scapes, that is your fella right there. Now, as I came out here, we're just over three and a half thousand to the east. The sun is still in front of us. We have managed to find ourselves past lots of really interesting and plains and woods areas. But I just want to talk about them because I've we talked about plains and woods quite a lot already. Another mushroom biome, though. This one is a single big one with these tentacles coming out. That would be a really interesting build, I think, there, wouldn't it? What you could do with that? That would be lovely. And out beyond that, we've got even more ocean coming on we've got next to it here is that an ocean little ocean ruin we've got going on underneath there which is quite nice i think is this yes look we have got the beginnings of a coral reef underneath us now oh is that yes sir, we have it is an ocean monument right here as well ocean monument at four and a half thousand blocks to the east minus seven four four next to a coral reef next to a mushroom island next to a frozen ocean looks like over there we've also got plenty of desert and savannah as well this is a great location Heading out south with the ocean to the left of us, coming over this mixed forest. But I've got to talk about, look, these eroded band lads. They are so beautiful. Wild West Town literally begging to be built around this area. It is absolutely stunning. I love these and I've never really done a proper building one. And I think one day, probably in the not too distant future, I'm gonna get myself an eroded Badlands build under my belt because they are fantastic. On the other side, as is so common with the Badlands, there is a desert. It makes sense. We've got the orange sand flowing into the yellow sand. And this is a fairly significant desert. And it's also got a savanna on the other side of it, plus another savanna and looks like an almost shattered savanna across this bay area. This bit doesn't make sense to me. This offends me. Frozen ocean right in the middle of a desert. What's that all about? We do, however, have another village right here. And this is quite a decent sized village. It's a little bit split. Hasn't got any towers, which is a bit of a shame. Desert villages normally have those really great towers to allow you to use them as raid farm generators, but not so much on that one, which is a bit of a shame. However, as we come a bit further, before I talk about the village, I just want to pause here. Look at this. We've got this savannah. It's not a shattered savannah, really. It's more of a large, hilly savannah. But you've got this lovely lagoon area there. You could do some beautiful builds off the back of that mountain as well. That would be great. But in front of us here, we have got a desert village that does have a tower. In fact, the tower looks like it is more or less splat bang in the middle of that village, which is absolutely brilliant. It's not quite slightly out to the edge, but that's okay. That could be used again as a raid 
farm generator sit yourself on top of that fella and just ping off all the things until the vexes come along you should be pretty safe they're even better if they've got two or three pillars but that one's not too bad you have a proper shattered savannah across on the right hand side there waiting for some steampunk go on go and get your steampunk on you could definitely build it there and in front of us before the desert becomes even more ocean a very wet seed this one we have got a desert temple so come and get your riches and treasures there just beyond that ocean there we have got all kinds of woods going on we've got birch for all of your stick needs we've got more birch we've got dark oak which is great if you want to build some medieval stuff we've got another swamp and if you look right in front of me there i've got a witch hut right on the edge of that swamp now because it's on the edge that implies that it's further away from a lot of the land which means less lighting up which means it's a lot easier to build yourself a witch farm in the distance there i can also see what looks like a pillager tower I think right in front of me there, that's perfect. Inside this huge plains area, this is calling for a city that's been not so much protected, maybe invaded by those pillagers. It's probably overlooking that village there. Pillagers tend to be built right near a village. We're heading out west across the mesa. We've got that eroded wasteland right to the left-hand side of us, but we spoke about that in the other direction. But the Badlands does continue for some time when we go this way. The ocean is to the right, but at the moment, apart from a whole lot of Badlands, which, I mean, that actually that, right there's your western town. Oh my goodness, that's fantastic. Apart from a whole lot of Badlands, I'm not quite sure what to say about this bit. Let's go on a little bit further. Well, we've gone about a thousand blocks and we found ourselves right on the edge of the Mesa. And what's really interesting, a little Mesa Island, but as an eroded Badlands, that's not something you see very often. Normally, the eroded Badlands are part of the larger Mesa, like that area. But this is on its own little island. That, that's got some great possibilities. If I played Bedrock, I'd be loading up this seed and doing something exciting with that straight away. The other side of it, We've got what looks like a frozen ocean, fairly decent sized one, but it's mixed in with some actual tangible land. And it looks like we've also got a coral reef right underneath us. I know, I know, night vision potion would be able to see it properly. I don't know what to tell you. I'm just rubbish at bedrock. But we've got just little bits of islands within this frozen ocean. Almost certainly there is going to be some shipwrecks around here. There almost always is when you go around a frozen ocean. Just the other side of the frozen ocean, it laps just onto the edge of this swamp here. Quite a decent sized swamp. They're all oh, look witch hut. That's your witch hut in the middle of that swamp too. Now I know bedrock doesn't do the same as Java, unless it does. Tell, tell me in the comments below. Hashtag iron golem. Can you make a slime farm in bedrock now the way you can in Java by putting an iron golem into a swamp and the slime's just trying to attack it and die? That would be interesting because if you can, that is a lovely big old wet swamp there that would act perfectly for that. We've got a lovely looking uh, mountains bit here. That's nice. Right, that's begging for a castle. Get yourself a castle on top of that overlooking the swamp, overlooking those plains where I guess your vassals could live. And we've also got the dark oak forest the other side of it with the sprawling plains going off in that direction. But we do have a snowy tundra to the right hand side here as well. We're not strictly speaking going in the uh, westerly direction, but I can talk about it because we are going to clip the edge. Big old snowy tundra means you've got some igloos in there that you can go and investigate. Maybe there's some treasures to be had underneath them. And then we've got a tiger biome coming on the left hand side, just the other end of this plains. Quite a decent sized tiger biome and also it looks like there's a village on the other side of it in the plains there. Good old mixture of biomes. Ah, and we've also got a frozen tundra village just coming up here. They're really interesting. They're such a simple village. The structures are basically tiny little log cabins and the odd igloo. But in reality, they're still as good as any other village in terms of collecting villagers for the villager relocation program. And the snowy tundra carries on for days and days and days. Want snow? Go west. I've done a quick slash locate just to look for some areas of interest, specifically the mansion. Now, bear in mind that we're at one and a half thousand zero effectively on the XZ at the minute, which means that the Woodland Mansion is only really about 5,000 blocks away from where we are right now. That's really close for Woodland Mansion, especially within Bedrock. Ocean Monument is only 800 blocks away, literally. Look, because we're, we're almost at 1,240. So we're at 1,400 at the moment on that uh access so it's only 800 blocks in that direction stronghold it's just over a thousand blocks away just over a thousand blocks really really close and the pillager outpost is only about a thousand blocks as well everything is really really close on this seed 
We have come on to chunk base because you can't use mine atlas for bedrock unfortunately but chunk base will allow you to. That red dot in the middle is where we spawn in at around about 1400x0 on the Z. You can see we have got that mesa right there where we've spawned in. If you go up north and slightly to the west you can see at the top edge left-ish there is a big old jungle lurking around about minus 1470 uh, around about 5,000 approximately. There's a big jungle there, which is excellent. You've got lots of desert as you go south, very little desert as you go up north. You can see bright pink. We have got those two mushroom islands that we found when we floated around and a decent amount of uh, ice and snow as well. Another mesa directly west, another mesa directly east. Really nice biome set. I've taken a potion of night vision now because I'm going to go into the nether. I can't do spectator mode to see what spawners are around, but I'm told that there are a number of spawners literally just under your feet. Hashtag spawners in the comments below. Do you come on here and find out a load of spawners? Let's light this fella up and see what's on the other side. I'm really very interested. Boom. What I like about this um, area in bedrock is that you literally bang straight in when you do bedrock uh, nether. It, you just fly into it. Now, we've come out right on the edge of a lava lake. Please do be careful. You're safe from lava above your head, less safe from lava down below on your feet. So let's just have a look around. And it looks like we've spawned literally in a cave. So I'm going to have to dig my way out and see if we can't find something. Now, around about minus 100, minus 100 is where you find the nearest nether fortress. So it's actually a bit of a trot from where you start off. But you have got things spawning like mad. Look at the number of spawns that are going on around here. There's loads of them. So you're going to be able to get yourself plenty of wither skeletons and maybe the odd skull or two. Do you see that wither skeleton? Just push the skeleton off the edge of the fortress. Is that a thing in bedrock? That's appalling. You're just a bully. You, you're a bully. You know what? You need to get some of your own medicine, you. Go on. Off you go. Go on. I'm rubbish at pushing. Maybe if I eat it. There you go. That's better. Down, sir. You're a bully and you deserve that. Now, I want to know whether or not we can find very easily our fungus. It looks like a very open area. We've got the blaze spawner right there. Perfect. Look at that. That would be dead easy to build yourself a blaze farm. That's amazing. We've got over here plenty of open area. Another blaze spawner just over this side as well. That would be quite nice as well. What about this direction? Have we got even more coming on? I think this looks very promising for my fungus. This fella here, protected by four blades. But there's the fungus right in there. We've got our nether wart. Thank goodness for that. I can sleep happy. What a really nice seed this is in bedrock. Now, this would actually tempt me to do a survival in bedrock because this is beautiful. Everything you need within literally a 1,000, 2,000 blocks. And the nether, whilst you do pop up in that cave, burying out of it didn't take very long. It was just literally up and across ever so slightly and you were good to go. Make sure you take yourself a pick and you're good. Also, fire resistance potion with all that lava might be a nice idea. So thank you very much. Venice, Venice, thank you for sharing this seed. Bedrock is not a format that I'm massively familiar with, but I know many people do enjoy it. And as a result, I'm hoping that you'll bring a number of them a lot of joy. If you have got an awesome seed that you want to share, whether it is Bedrock, whether it is Java, let me know at avamanceminecraft at gmail.com. That is avamanceminecraft at gmail.com. Because then I might be able to feature it in one of these episodes, just like Venice did back in February. Venice, I'm so sorry it's taken so long. That's how many of these seeds I've been sent. Hundreds, hundreds. But do send them in because if you give me a good description as to why yours is great, then absolutely you could be jumping the queue because I want the best ones. If you have enjoyed this video, please do remember to slap that like button. It'd be great to know you're enjoying them and I will keep on making them. Also, if you've not done it already, please do hit that subscribe button. It'd be great to see you in my sub club and I look forward to seeing you in another video. You take it easy now. Bye.